the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in the short days and long nights of Advent, we find hope and reassurance because our God rejoices greatly in our faithfulness. Gathered around this wreath, we trust in Christ's promise to come again and humbly pray for God's grace. Good and loving Lord, let your blessing come upon this wreath and upon all of us. Help us to remain awake and alert as we reflect the light of the one who was, who is, and who is to come through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
because we follow his commandments. We live our lives as he taught, by loving God and loving neighbor. Yes, Advent is a time now of watchfulness. It is a time for us to be alert. Advent is a way for us to have that same groaning, that same longing as our ancestors did in faith. For they longed for the coming of the Messiah. They longed for the coming of the Savior of the world. We hear today in that first reading from Isaiah. We hear, yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the pot. And I don't know if you ever took a pottery class. Now, I never did that. But I've watched plenty on YouTube. And you see the work that the potter does. That when the potter is sitting there, I don't even know what it's called, but with the potter's wheel, wheel he's using, or he or she are using their hands as they shape that clay as they form that clay into whatever it is supposed to be. And they put their whole bodies into it. They're not detached. They become part of that pottery. And each one is different. Each one is unique. Just like you and I. Each one of us are different. Each one of us are unique. Each one of us has a mix of light and darkness in us. And each one of us are loved by God so much that he sent his only son. God did not choose to stay many, many far away or far away from us, his people. Instead, he chose to come to the earth. He chose to become one of us. And by becoming one of us, he showed us how to live our lives. As we are part of this Advent season, we remember that Jesus is the hope of our world. That yes, even though we are in the midst of a global pandemic, we know that perhaps because of our activities during Thanksgiving, that the infection rate will rise. We know that we are in the midst of some difficulties in our nation with race relationships. We know that people of faith are often persecuted and oppressed, laughed at, pushed away. It is in the midst of this distress, in the midst of this, that the light of the world will come, that Jesus will brighten our lives. He will give us that hope the one gift that cannot be taken away from us, the gift of hope of a new heaven and a new earth. The Advent wreath, which slowly will start to come to light, will once again remind us that the true light of the world is coming. Jesus is on his way. He will come in glory. So this is not a time to be afraid. It is a time, though, to look at our lives and to see what perhaps we need to change. Let us change those areas of darkness in our life. Let us allow the light of Christ to burn brightly. Let us await the coming of the Savior. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God works mighty deeds for his people. With confidence, we place our needs in his loving care. Our response throughout Advent will be, give us new hope. For the people of St. Michael Parish in this new liturgical year, for vigilant attention to our responsibility to use God's gifts for the good of all humanity and the benefit of all of creation, for encouragement when we are tired, discouraged, or distracted, we pray to the Lord, give, give us, us new hope. hope. For the grace to admit our sins and remain blameless until the day our Lord comes again. For dedication to Advent prayer and meditation in our homes, we pray to the Lord, give us new hope. For all who wait in poverty or in need, for those seeking God's divine justice and peace, for those whose hearts have hardened, we pray to the Lord, give us new hope. For all who are called to fellowship with Jesus, for hearts that are welcoming, watchful, and alert this Advent, for the grace to be faithful and the strength to use God's spiritual gifts, we pray to the Lord, give us new hope. For those working to develop and test vaccines for the coronavirus, for those with the responsibility for its distribution, and for all who continue to perish from the virus each day, we pray to the Lord. Give us new hope. For those who suffer mentally, emotionally, or physically, especially those named in the parish bulletin and on our parish website, for freedom from the darkness of all sickness and despair, we pray to the Lord. Give us new hope. We pray for God's faithful servants who now rest in eternal peace, especially those remembered in our bulletin and on our website. And for those who have lost a loved one in this season of waiting, we pray to the Lord. Give us new hope. Jesus, you are our hope for our world. Unite us this Advent as we work to become more like you. May we restore your kindness and give voice to your truth. May we pray with humility, joy, and thanksgiving, and courageously say yes to your will, even when it's hard to follow your path. Emmanuel, God with us, fill us with your peace and hope in this time of waiting and uncertainty. Hold us close in your love. Amen.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, as at last all is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy Spirit may become one body 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Thanks be to God. Amen. 